In the early 20s, uh, Cleveland was the fifth largest city in the United States. And at that time, there was no radio, there was no television. Live entertainment was the equivalent of the uh, major television networks of today. So the big forms of entertainment were, were burlesque and vaudeville and legitimate theater. And of those three, vaudeville was far and away the leader. And the stars, so many of whom we, we met later in uh, television and radio, and movies uh, got their start in the vaudeville circuit. One of those uh, groups were the Marx Brothers, uh, another was the Three Stooges, and Mo Howard wrote a book in which he said the life on the road as a vaudevillian was very difficult. They were on the road almost all the year. They were, since they were performers, they were not welcome in the better hotels. They spent most of their day in the theater waiting to go on between movies. Um, and backstage in the theaters was a pretty dismal place, with the exception of the Palace Theater in Cleveland, Ohio, which at the time it was built was the finest theater in the country. And there were great amenities for the performers, including uh, a nursery for the kids who traveled with the show. This was 1922, and that was a real daycare center. Next to that down the hall was a beauty parlor barber shop. One floor up was a billiard room, a game room. On the other side of the Palace stage, was seven floors of dressing rooms, and every dressing room had its own uh, private bathroom with a bathtub and shower, and in 1922, it exceeded today's minimum equity standards for dressing rooms. So the palace was just a terrific place to play. And a lot of performers who played there had a wonderful time. In fact, not because of it, but coincidentally, uh, George Burns and Gracie Allen were married in Cleveland while they were playing at the palace.